Hello everyone. Some commenters have suggested that I should try an ASMR type video. So this is my attempt. Let me know in the comments whether you like it, good or bad. For this video I'm going to be building a classic Mtron set, the Particle Ionizer from 1990. This is one of my sets from my childhood so it has a uh, nostalgia for me. I'll open up the pieces. All right, let's separate them into some of the bigger pieces. Here is the minifigure, the classic smiley, the Amtron logo, air tanks, and of course a nice neon green visor. The windshield. Beautiful green. All right, good enough. Let's take a look at the instructions. Alright, starting out, the first thing he wants to build is the droid. Now, he's already mostly constructed from last time I built this set, but let's put his arm back on. Looks like everything else is there. He's a this vintage joystick piece as his body, which is a, a nice touch, I think. Neat little android. Put him there with his buddy. Alright, let's start building the ship. So, start out with these hull pieces. Join them together with some one by six, some one by six plates, key colors of Mtron are red, black, and the old light gray, and of course the neon, trans neon green. A very cool color, really evocative of this 90s Lego space, and these will even fluoresce under a, under a black light. So pretty cool. All right, now we got these big 16 long black bricks. You don't see such large bricks used too often these days. Alright, get a nice... Oh, almost skip something. We have these one by ones here. One by one plates.
Found one. Now, sets of this era didn't have numbered bags, so this is much what like the original building experience would be. A lot of searching. All right, now we're ready to move on to step four. Put this big four by eight plate on there. And of course there's no inventory or let's say parts list for each step, so you just gotta do a comparison from one step to the next. Uh, here's a uh, modified with clip plate. Oh, I missed another one. Gotta pay attention. Alright, here we go. Need one of these. I think this is going to be basically like a controls for the ship. A few wedge plates on there. Okay, let's double check. Looking good. On to step five. Another one of these interesting wedge plates I used to use. Alright. Black plates for the back of the ship. Get those on there. Nice and secure. Alright, step six. Let's take a look at the underside. All right, need a few more two by two round plates. And time for some of these cool old engine pods. Ooh. The ridges in these are really pretty neat. Alright, flip it back over. We have another little control panel piece to look for. Uh, here we go. Classic piece. Printing was much simpler back then, but has a has a neat look. It almost reminds me of the actual the way the uh, control panels looked in the old original Star Wars series. All right, some more plates. Get some one by two plates. Going through the bigger pieces pretty fast here as we build up the core of the ship. Starting to take shape. Oh well, we gotta tilt this up a little bit to match the instructions. 
Okay. Looks good. On to step eight. It's another pretty unique wedge plate that was popular back in the 90s. Okay, we got a couple little one by one plates sneaking in there. Let's get those guys right between the red and black sections of the ship. This is the first part that's not symmetrical left to right. Now, we need a couple slopes with the Mtron logo. Now, I'm going to have to assume that there's an Mtron logo over there. Unlike modern instructions, they don't show us. Finishing up step eight. Well, I think it looks pretty good. All right, let's move on to number nine. All right, I'm starting from the back this time. Lots of red and black. Let's find just some one by one round cone pieces. Looks like some sort of little thrusters in the back. Alright. Okay, looks like we need some tiles. Not the ones with the logo. Here we go, just a nice plain red tile. I don't know what you call these kind of like a lattice pieces. It's interesting some pieces that have survived over the years like these, but seem to be much more common back in the older sets. Of course, quite a few pieces here you won't see anymore. I like these odd wedges. Of course, some printed these thrusters. And I, th I think you can still find these angular uh, hull pieces, but there's a lot of rounded, a lot of more rounded uh, parts these days. Alright, I'll have to straighten that out a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I'm on... Actually moved on to step 10. I think 9. Looks good. So let's keep going with step 10. Move some tiles on here. Alright. Okay, uh, we got a couple one by one bricks back there. Let's find those. And there's a two by two red brick back here as well. Uh, 
Another not symmetrical placement apart. Oh, no, I'm wrong. This one is in the center. There we go. Okay. Does it look good? I think I'm satisfied with it, so let's move on to the next page. Oh boy, now we're getting to just one step per page as the ship gets bigger. Okay. These are an interesting older snot piece. We don't see these anymore. Nor these kind of uh, tail fins. way of gripping in between the studs is not common. Probably that would not be legal to design a part like that by modern standards. Alright, I had to build this first because this is the most interesting bit of this step. Let's move backwards. What else do we have? We need some one by two plates there, on, right behind this knot piece. And a couple more on top of the brick. Alright, and now we're going to need some hinge pieces. Already, already all snapped together. I think this will finish us up for step 11. Looking good. Let's move on to 12. Alright, got to build two of these side panels with some nice, nice Amtron logos on there. magnet pieces. Those exposed magnets have been discontinued. That was one of the cool features of M-Tron magnets. Uh, you could say that M stands for magnet. Not sure if that's official in any way. Alright, here's another printed tile. Such an 80s looking logo. Of course, this is a 1990 set, but a lot of 80s influence carrying over. Alright, we got those on, and we need a nice long... What is that? Ten long red plate to bridge the front and back sections. Oh, we're gonna clip some tools in. We got a walkie-talkie, a space walkie-talkie, let's say, and a, a space wrench for high-tech space maintenance. All right. Oh, and of course these tail pieces, tail fins, all right, I think it's good. Now we're on to step 13 get to put the big cockpit piece on there. Look at that. Practically glowing neon green. Very cool. And also some 
Pretty neat printing on these side door panels. All right, so it wants us to put some fins on these, some camera pieces, which are used for all sorts of things. Looks like a, a lace laser blaster over there. And we also put some camera pieces on these rear fins to create some more weapons or thrusters. Or possibly dual purpose. All right, step 13. Moving on to 14. Continue building up this rear section. I have a feeling this would be a sub-assembly these days. Alright. The other side door panel. Some more lasers. Starting to look pretty cool, like a real spaceship. Alright, what else do we have in this step? Uh, this printed slope with a vent lines on it. And it looks like we're good. All right. On to step 15. I'll start with the sub-assembly. This is going to be the arm on top with a magnet that can be used to pick up our awesome space cargo. All right. Classic style hinges have some advantages to the click hinges, but of course they would they did wear out over time. And this one's not too bad, but it's a little bit loose. And we're starting to have some more gray, but there's not a whole lot of it on this model. Of course, this is an old gray, slightly more yellowish than the light bluish gray. All right, I need a couple headlight bricks up here. And it looks like on this step, it's also time to fold down these rear wings. All right, I think that's everything. Step 15. Now we're moving on to 16. Let's get rid of this bin. Okay. Now we're getting to the exterior details, building up our magnet arm here. And we're going to have another hinge. So we got some double hinge action here. 
Yeah, it's see it's a little bit loose from age, unfortunately. All right. So we're also adding these hoses. Very popular piece for spaceships. And these lines. Alright. I think that's it for this step. As well. Time to move on to 17. Okay, just peeking ahead a little bit there. There is more, but it uh, has these photographs to show you how you can stow the robot inside, so I'll do that in a second. When I saw these photos, I thought, oh, wait a minute. Well, there's pretty many parts left. How can this be the end? But no. All right, this is interesting spinning element on the roof here. Okay, anything else on this step? Doesn't look like it. All right, now it shows... Okay, we can open the door here and take our robot buddy and fold his antenna in, his arms in, fold his legs up, and he can just slide right on in there. Nice and cozy. Good place for a robot guy to hang out. Oh, actually, wants us to do it this way, I think. Okay. There we go, he's safe in there. And then, we have to build up this kind of cargo tray. This one, this interesting sub-assembly gets its own page. A lot of smaller pieces on this bit. Looks like we're going to have some more nice space tools. Got to have your uh, space hammer. And whatever this thing is. Maybe some sort of scope you can look at things through. They like to use these robot arm pieces for all kind of stuff. They have a fairly evocative shape. Okay. Looks like oh, the crystal is still in there. It's a rocket, rocket tail fin piece in that awesome trans neon green. Put that in there. Okay. Some nice printing on there as well. Alright, so finishing this guy up. Let's see. We got... Alright. So we put this on here. We got a couple slopes to go on. A grill piece. And a 2x4 plate. And then we need a, one of our awesome magnet pieces on there. Let's do that. Nice. 
base neon antenna so the ship can communicate with this cargo box. All right. Looks like everything. Next page shows us that this goes on the back. Fits in there securely. And magnet on top. All right, we also need to build this front gun or camera. It's an interesting attachment mechanism. There's these very short rods that go into the holes in the studs on the hinge piece. I did it backwards. All right. There we go. And a red cone. All right. Put that guy on the bottom there. All right. We're also going to put a couple of these goblets on this top piece. And I think we're good for step 18. Now they're not wasting any paper with this one. Step 19 on the back that shows the final model also has you add parts to it. Very efficient. All right, a couple more antennas. I guess you could say this is like a, some sort of communication array or I don't know, maybe this is for the particle ionizing in the name of the set. That's also a bit reminiscent of a helicopter. All right, let's get our spaceman in there. Nice and secure, ready to fly. There she is. Number 6923, Particle Ionizer, M-Tron. It's got some decent sociability. Got to make sure you test that out. Now you can use this arm. Yeah, it's pretty secure in there. But to pick up your cargo. Drop it off. Take your robot out there. Got some nice little functions for a medium sized set. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching my video. This is for Kosigan78. Let me know what you think, what I could do better.